And this is our 47th night for our prophetic prayer shield, which has been going for over a month and a half, according to the mandate of the Lord. And the Lord, uh, when he first told me and imparted to me that I needed to do these broadcasts and we needed to do it as a ministry, uh, the Lord showed me that I needed to release encouragement, revelation, and we needed to war for the nations whilst we've been going through this fiery trial of COVID-19. But people of God, I am in full knowing uh, before the Lord that he is has allowed this uh, judgment to come upon the earth for purpose, for his glorious purpose, that there is a transformation happening upon the earth that will cause a glorious pur purpose, a release into a new season. And although the Lord God has not caused this judgment, he, you know, God doesn't bring judgment, but only the, the, the rebellion and the sin of man will is what causes judgment because then demons can enter in through open doors which god allows but i can tell you that god is in the the uh transformation and the glorious purpose of this this terrible trial and he will bring those out of darkness into his marvelous light because of it because what the enemy has has uh, meant for evil god always turns around for good hallelujah thank you for joining me tonight and every night uh, or any night you can we're just so very blessed to have you with us you know we do our level best to to bring god's heart into these broadcasts and and to bring his presence as we speak from the very throne room of god so thank you so much and we do ask that you share these broadcasts as much as possible with your friends your family because we know that god anoints them for purpose he gave them to us as a mandate he entrusted them to us and we know he wants to release his glory through these broadcasts so thank you very much for doing that each and every night. Bless you. Let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise tonight, Lord, that we have the honor uh, of being entrusted with these broadcasts. Thank you, Lord, that we can come on every single night for an hour and release your revelation knowledge pray and declare and make a difference across the nations of the earth father god we we just ask that you would send your precious holy spirit our way and and just let us be immersed in your spirit tonight as we move according to your purpose holy spirit you're welcome amongst us father god we thank you again in the mighty name of jesus amen hallelujah god is glorious and he will be with us during this broadcast. You know, the word of God uh, says in Isaiah uh, chapter two, verse one through four, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem was now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountain and it shall be exalted above the hills and all nations will flow to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Praise be to God. So we're in a, a timing and a season, people of God, that there's transformation happening. And the Lord gave me a vision a couple of nights ago, quite an extensive vision about how he is birthing Mechizedek nations. And for those of you that aren't familiar uh, with that term, although I, I wager probably some of you are, uh, that is uh, certainly a very profound scripture uh, it mentioned in Genesis. There was a Melchizedek priest, and I'll spell that for you. That's M-E-L-C-H-I-Z-E-D-E-K. And this was a priest that came as, as a, a righteous representation of the heavenly kingdom of God and he met Abraham and and if we look in Hebrew 7 as well it explains it more what happened uh, during that interchange and in verse 1 of Hebrew 7 it says 
This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem, which means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the son of God, he remains a priest forever. And if we go down further in Hebrews, and this is Hebrews chapter 7, going down to verse 11, this is the bit I want you to really grab hold of tonight because it has to do with the birthing of the Melchizedek uh, nations, which God showed me in the vision. And in verse 11, it says, if perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to the people established who established that priesthood, why was there still need for another priest to come? One in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron. So we're talking about Jesus Christ. And for when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. He of whom these things are said belonged to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever served at this altar. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah. And in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. And that we have said in even more clear terms that another priest like Melchizedek has appeared. One who has become a priest not on the basis of regulation or rules or man's ways as is to his ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. For it is declared, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So we are talking about uh, that we are moving into a time and a season of grace and glory. And this order of Melchizedek, these Melchizedek nations that the Lord has given me this vision about is presently we are going to move into a time where we're going to learn how to abide with the Lord and we're going to walk in righteousness before him fully and completely without distractions in this next great season. And, and this is the order of Melchizedek. And I, I just just want to read to you I journaled this vision because it was very very long and the Lord gave me uh, loads of detail in this vision and I'm going to unpack it probably over tonight and tomorrow night so we can really get it into our spirits because it, it is so very detailed that it does talk about this next season remember God gives me uh, future words about nations because I God has called me as a prophet to the nations so I see things on global terms and I wanted to just speak to you about uh, this particular vision because it's very significant about the change in our lives and also our destiny that we shall be walking in as sons and daughters of the Most High God. So I saw two edges uh, of cliffs, and I was standing on one side of a cliff and then looking across a, a great, like, canyon, a deep, deep chasm or canyon across to the other side of the canyon where there was another rock face or cliff. And between the two, there was a rope bridge, a very long rope bridge connecting them. And it was swaying and swaying in, in the breeze. And uh, the drop below was so very deep. If anyone had, it was life threatening. In fact, if anyone had fallen, they would have, they would have died of the fall alone because it was so very deep. But I saw actually fire and smoke rising up out of the canyon as well. And the, really the only way anyone could walk across that rope bridge was one by one. And I knew by the spirit of God that that is how God intended it, because one by one is how he holds us accountable. And in other words, I can't make you righteous and you can't make me righteous. We have to be accountable for our own walks before the Lord. But by his power and by his spirit and by our repentant hearts, he can cleanse us and strengthen us and help us to walk in righteousness. And so then I heard the Lord say, let not fear of taking up the challenge 
stop my beloved from walking across the plan of rescue that I have provided. So I knew then, as he was showing me that and speaking those words, that we had to walk across that rope bridge. We had to move into the next season of righteousness. And, and we had to cause all of the darkness to be cast off of our shoulders, off of ourselves, where our eyes, our eye gates, and, and we weren't in any way distracted into darkness. So that we were singularly focused on what God had for us. And then, then he said, the plan of rescue that I provided is important. That this is this is a key to the next season that you're, that my my people, my sons and daughters, are going to be walking in. And he said, for holding back, this is what he spoke to me to bring warning about. He said, for holding back and clinging to old world patterns shall lead to certain death and destruction. So there will be torments uh, that, you know, some of some people may not even make it through, uh, you know, because they're they're so distracted into what the world is saying. And even in the churches, what many leaders are saying of how their congregation members need to walk, which is nothing to do with the spirit of God. And it says for I but then the Lord said, for I am bringing a cataclysm of equal manifestations in the natural and the spirit realms. So I looked up that word cataclysm, and it means uh, that there, there's going to be a huge, uh, you know, social and natural upheaval of global proportions. And the Lord said, for I am bringing forth a cataclysm of equal manifestations in the natural and in the spirit realm. So there's something very big that's about to happen, people of God, to bring about. Uh, and we, I know that COVID-19 is global, but I believe there there will be other things that, that are going to be released in the natural and also in the spirit realm to cause there to be such a societal and, and natural change of the order of things that God's perfect will will be established uh, more than it has uh, you know, ever. Uh, and this is this is the hand, the sovereign hand of the Lord, the order of Melchizedek. God is lining up things because we are in the latter days and it is time for the latter days anointing to come down upon the people of God and for us to walk out our destiny and stand as appointed vessels to bring in the harvest. Hallelujah. And, it, and then he said this caterpillar cataclysmic manifestation that will happen in the this this so societal upheaval this this huge global upheaval in the natural and spiritual realm shall rain down and the lord spoke this very exactingly to me both terror and my glory at the same time. So I believe there will be those that don't have understanding because they're not moving uh, in tandem with God. They're not moving in the spirit with God. So they're not going to be able to hear. And so because they don't understand what's going on, they, they will be frightened. But there will be also those that understand about God's glory. And he said that that there shall be a raining down of terror and glory at the same time. But uh, and then he said that there will be decisions at the valley of the dry bones uh, and, and at at this place. And this is a place where people uh, reach the end of themselves and they make decisions whether they're going to walk in righteousness without distractions, without anxieties or the patterns of the world or if they're going to stay in that. And, it, and that's the dry bones when you come to the end of yourself. And he said that uh, the, the outcome shall be these decisions will have such impact that it shall impact and have the outcome where it, it will influence whole generations of families and people groups. So it's very important, these decisions that we're making now, because remember, God doesn't force anyone to walk with him, you know, and, and to have their ear to his chest and hear his heartbeat and hear his words and move in a place of righteousness. But God desires for all of us to walk that journey with him, to take up the fullness and the abundance of that rain. And, and then the Lord exhorted me and he said, make them understand the importance of the hour that they are now living in. And then he said, for the driving rain of my spirit shall not have rest in the coming days. 
Now let's think about that. He said the driving rain of his spirit will not have rest in the coming days. That means there's an urgency that we're in the latter days, that he is going to rain down and rain down his glory. And those that will catch, you know, those raindrops, those golden raindrops and place them in their heart and take on the anointing of God shall do great exploits for God. Hallelujah. And there, there will be a driving rain and, and this cataclysmic uh, societal upheaval that will happen both in the heavenly and the natural realms will be going on at the same time. And he said that, that this driving rain from the heavenly realm will not will will not have rest. It will keep coming. And then he said, and the surging current of the waters of my spirit shall bring about waves of power and authority to those who dare to trust me in very great measure. Isn't that exciting? God is saying that, that there will be a surging current of, of power and authority through the waters of the spirit. And, and he said, for those who dare to trust me. And this is where, you know, we talk about in Psalm 110, how, how we sit at, at the footstool, you know, of, of the, in the heavenly realm. And, and God put, uh, brings forth his arm of authority and fights our battles for us. And it says, and that's where trust comes in, that we don't have to strive. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious. We need, just need to put on the whole armor of God, let it be righteous and not let distractions uh, take us to the right or the left or, or, or any spirit torment us because we have all authority through God and he said my watchman shepherds shall call forth the hour and my remnant shall heed their voices as the birthing of Melchizedek nations comes to pass said the Lord God Almighty Hallelujah. People of God, we are in exciting times. But one by one, we have to go over that rope bridge and we have to decide at the, the, the valley of the dry bones. We have to decide if we're going to enter into that place that sometimes, you know, we're talking God. You know, sometimes it can be quite terrifying. I know when I in 2017, when I had the visitations from God six days in a row, I, I can tell you I've told this this before but I'll, I'll say it again when he came and appeared to me I could not the light was so bright I could not even see his his face and his his hair was absolutely on fire and he had uh, such a, a, a huge authority as he held his scepter and his sword and and uh, when he was speaking to me I could I could just feel the blast of wind that was roaring as he was speaking. There was such a heavy presence and power to the Lord appearing before me. And literally, I felt like I was holding on with all of my might just to hear his words because the wind was blowing so uh, heavily towards me. And yet I was able to do it. And let, yet I was able to bear his glory and hear his words. And he told me about what was going to happen in the future for the UK specifically and the nations of the earth. And, the, and this was in 17. So this was three years ago, 2017. And since then, so many things have come to pass. And now the Lord's saying, and this is just a few days ago, that he is now birthing Melchizedek nations. These are nations that will, will uh, have be glory filled. They're, they will have people like yourself and myself that, that walk in his power and authority and have the glory of God upon us as we bring forth his word as we have credibility amongst the nations, as we operate as sons and daughters of the most high God. You know, in Hebrews, it talks about that. And we'll go into Hebrews in just a moment about how we are registered firstborn. We are sons and daughters. We have a voice in heaven. And this is what's going to be happening in this next hour. And last night, the Lord spoke to me that we are going to, going to be manifesting as true roses of Sharon. And if, if we look in, in Song of Solomon's in, in ver, chapter two, verse one, it talks about the rose of Sharon. And it, those flowers bloom at the very top 
of the mountains of God. And we just read in Isaiah about how uh, about Zion and about the mountain of God. And when we're talking about the mountain of God, we're talking about the heavenly realm. And, and there is governmental authority when we are in that place of his presence. And we are as roses of Sharon because we, we are blooming because this is our time, our appointed time of destiny, where we're standing on the mountain of Zion in our heavenly places. We're hearing the voice of God and we're being obedient as, as uh, sons and daughters, as, as vessels of the spirit of God to release power and authority upon the earth. Isn't that wonderful? That's I just, you know, that kind of thing just just so, so compels me and stirs me because I know that we are in a time and an hour that God is calling us to destiny. If we look actually in Psalm 110, verse one, it says, the, uh, the Lord said to my Lord. So Yahweh and Jesus Christ, they were conversing together and it says, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstools. The Lord shall send your mighty scepter out of Zion and you shall rule in the midst of your enemies. Hallelujah. So he will go before us. And it says in verse three, your people will follow you in the day of battle on the holy mountain, on that mountain of Zion. Praise be to God at the dawn of the morning and at the dew of your youth. So, so your youth will be renewed. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are. It says at the dew of your youth, it belongs to you. Those victories belong to you. So we don't have to worry about, you know, about, oh, maybe we're a little bit old to be fighting spiritual battles. I can tell you, let's not think in the natural. Let's think in the supernatural. Because think about Moses when he had spent 40 years in the desert and he was 80 years old. And he, he just saw this burning bush and walked up to the burning bush. And, and all of a sudden, God started speaking to him out of this burning bush and said, take off your sandals. You're on holy ground and started unrolling un to him or, or uh, you know, really giving him full, uh, you know, panoramic view of his destiny in the next few years. And that was to deliver the whole nation of Israel out of Egypt and bring them into the promised land. And and at first, I'm sure he didn't believe it because he was thinking in the natural. I'm old. I, I've been in the desert. I'm just a shepherd. I can't speak. And, and But all of us think that way at first. But I can tell you, the more that Moses was in the glory of God, the stronger and more anointed he became for purpose. And I can tell you, people of God, the more that we are in the, the presence of God and the glory of God, and we, we listen to the words of the prophets, and we understand that God is birthing the nations, those nations that will be righteous because we, we will declare what is not into a place that it is. We will speak the word of the Lord and it shall come to pass. And there will be many that, that their hearts will be softened and they will walk according to their destiny. Then we shall see change. We shall see such change, such transformation. Hallelujah. So also, let's just go very quickly to Song of Solomon's. And let's just read in, in verse two, uh, or sorry, chapter two, starting in uh, verse two. And it says, oh, let's go back to verse one. It's so beautiful. It says, I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. As a lily among the thorns, so is my love among the maidens. As an apple tree among the trees of the forest, of the forest so is my beloved among the young men. In his shadow I sat with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banquet house, and his banner over me was love. No, this is talking about we are the Lord's beloved. We are that bride. You know, I read about in Revelation 19 about that we are the bride that is coming to the to the wedding, uh, you know, to the wedding. And, and God is preparing us without spot or wrinkle. And and the, the bridegroom is is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the one that we are waiting for. And he says that that. Uh, we uh, are his delight and we sit in his shadow and, and that he's brought us to the banquet house. So he's feeding us. He's filling us up. He's restoring us. He's positioning us. 
And it says here, his banner over us will be love. So he will always safeguard us and preserve us because his banner over us is love. This is why we don't have to be afraid in the midst of COVID-19 because we have things to do. You know, we say in America, we have stuff to do and, and we do. God has is ordering our steps. We have a magnificent destiny in front of us where God is birthing Mekhizedek nations. He is causing, it, he's going to cause a cataclysmic societal change in both the spiritual and the natural realm. So no, you might say, well, what is that exactly? Well, I can tell you that the demonic spirits, and we've talked about it so many nights about that there's a threefold confederacy uh, and this is mentioned in revelation 16 just go in there and look but there's a false witness which is jezebel there's a beast and, and that is the whore of babylon and there's the dragon and that is leviathan and this threefold global uh grouping of of uh you know d demonic uh principalities have have really taking control globally for way too long and this societal upheaval is going to cause their power to be no more and and jesus christ and the lord of lords and king of kings god jehovah are going to enable us by the power of the holy spirit to move into our rightful positions so he will be usurped he will no longer be the prince over the air because I can tell you, uh, you know, he got that right when when Adam and Eve were disobedient in the garden. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross, then the tables turned and, and then we received that authority and that right to be able to enforce his will upon the earth. Hallelujah. I mean, the word does talk about that, uh, you know, that we are redeemed from the curse of the law. That means that legal right that the enemy had to take authority over the world was broken. And that we can now take our rightful positions, not because we're righteous by our own uh, behavior, but because we acknowledge that we're saved by grace. We acknowledge that with repentant hearts and with a great love for God, that we can enter into that place as sons and daughters of the Most High God and that his glory will shame uh, will, 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 will shine down on us in such a way that we then can move into a greater place with him. You know, and, and I started to say shade us because it, it also shades us because we're under a, a refuge, uh, you know, these feathers all around us. God's always shadowing us. El Shaddai is always shadowing us. And so we don't have to worry that we put one foot wrong as long as we don't have distractions and we walk with repentant hearts and, and our whole hearts are to the Lord, then he will safeguard us in all times of trouble all times of trouble. So in these next days ahead, uh, you might ask me, well, Lisa, are we going to be entering in to some really uh, shaky times? My answer to you would be yes. But but does that mean that's going to, going to in any way uh, shake us? Absolutely not, because we are going to have our eyes fixed on God and be moving in his purpose and his power and his grace. And he will keep us in, in the shading, in the shadow of the Most High. And he will preserve us as we are obedient to what he's telling us by revelation knowledge. Hallelujah. I also wanted to go very quickly to, to Hebrews 12, because I think it's so very powerful that we go there and just read what the word says about, about uh, what's happening in this time and this season. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. So it's, it's Hebrews 12, and it's chapter 20, or sorry, <laughs> chapter 12, verse 22. And it says, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. I don't want you to forget about the angels because they are all around us. And as we stay in the presence of God, his angels are all around us. I'll tell you a story about how uh, recently, I'd say this last year, I was I was asked to go and minister and I took a friend of mine uh, with me, a wonderful prayer warrior with me, and we traveled to a place in France, Strasbourg, France. And we were asked by the pastors there to go and see uh, uh, or to, to, to go and attend rather a service uh, because there was a man that was wanting to minister at their church, but they had 
a reservation in their hearts, a, a check in their spirit, so to speak, where they, they, they just didn't feel like it was right that he came, but they couldn't really pinpoint why. They just knew they weren't meant to invite him. And this man was quite well renowned across France and still is to my knowledge. Uh, but the Lord, uh, but in some camps, not all camps in the body of Christ, but in some camps. And so the Lord uh, gave me the release to go as the pastors asked me to. And we, I took the intercessor friend with me and we went with one of their leaders and we, we walked into the service and this man walked through a door. There was probably about there weren't even very many there. It was a small uh, service, prophetic service that he was having there. There maybe were about 40 uh, French people there. We walked in and uh, and sat down and they were singing at the time. And then this, this minister came out and immediately I saw uh, demons standing around him and they were attached to him. And I knew that he was a false prophet and he was hearing the words uh, the, uh, out of a spirit of divination. And, and uh, well, then we started having physical manifestations in the service. And and in fact, um, the, my intercessor friend, she started having uh, terrible pain in her arm, as did the church leader that had come along with us. And and we, because I, I warned them both, I said, this man is a false prophet, we need to pray. So they were praying and they started manifesting with this pain in their, in their right arms. And then I started feeling as I was praying and really rebuking and commanding those demons to go and cutting off the spirit of divination, I felt this it, almost like a two pronged sharp a uh, nail like piercing right here in my face here and here and that as it and so i had a physical manifestation of the warring that was going on but we kept at it and we kept at it and we were praying and there were two young men there were also from the church uh, that we had come from and uh, who did not have discernment as to what was happening. And we didn't know that they would be there either. So I encouraged uh, them to leave, uh, which they they agreed to do. I said, there's there's some real trouble here and you, you need to leave. And they did. Uh, but they waited for us outside and we were still warring and warring and warring. And then I saw two angels Suddenly the, the pain from my face left and, and it diminished uh, with the, those that were with me, the intercessor and the, the leader. And then I saw two angels push uh, these demons out the door. And then then we were released then to go. And I mean, they really gave them a push and shut the door and they were out of that building. And so we had then the, the, the release to be released from there. And then the Lord spoke to me that that these were the angels that were attached to our ministry and that that we could, as we pray, uh, we could be assured that those angels will be warring in our behalf. And anywhere we released warfare prayers, that those angels would push back the enemy into his own net. And they, and you know, it that night, that exactly happened. So then, a few days later, praise be to God, we we explained to the boys on the night that there was an issue, and, and we didn't go too far in depth because we knew that they were new Christians, and we prayed and, and, and thanked God for helping us on the night. But then a few days later, I was sitting with another prophet of God that is that he's a senior prophet and he ministers in France quite a lot. And I was sitting with him having uh, a refreshment and we were having some tea and, and speaking. And, and I said, do you know this man? Because this is what I saw by the spirit and we were warring. And, and he said, absolutely. He said, this man is well known by discerning prophets as a false prophet that operates uh, to, to fill up his pockets with, with money and greed. And uh, But at the end of the day, he has a lot of people fooled that he is of God, but he's actually a wolf in sheep's clothing. And he's caused a lot of ruin of churches by him going in and releasing demonic words within congregations. And so, of course, the, the pastors did not have him in. 
They trusted our discernment. The, the confirming word was the other well-known prophet that spoke the same thing to these pastors. And I believe that th those sheep that were in that meeting that night were protected, but also the sheep, the more than 150 or so people in that church were protected as well because of the discernment and those angels as well moving in our behalf. So I just want to encourage you that we do have angels protecting us. God does allow angels to protect us. So I'm just reading further in. It says we have a, an innumerable company of angels. And to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, that's us people of God, because we are born into, born again, born into the body of Christ, born into uh, the heavenly realms with the Lord, who are enrolled in heaven to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous ones made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks better than that of Abel. So even the blood of martyrs is on our side, crying out for justice. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused him who spoke on earth, much less shall we escape if we turn away from him who speaks in heaven. At that time, his voice shook the earth. People of God, we can't turn away from what's happening. And God is shaking the earth with what's happening with COVID-19. He's causing there to be a cleansing and transformation. And it says, and at that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has given a promise to us saying, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. So this is what I saw in my vision, that there was going to be a cataclysmic upheaval in both the heavenly realm and the earthly realm and it says and and this statement yet once more signifies the removal of those things that can be shaken things that are created so that only those things that cannot be shaken will remain hallelujah so there's purpose in it when there's a shaking happening and God allows it when he speaks his will over the nations of the earth. It's because he wants there to be a cleansing. He wants there to be a softening of hearts. He wants people, uh, more people to be positioned and be uh, take the, the blinders off their eyes. He wants to remove the veil so they can understand and perceive his truth and move out of fear, out of old world patterns and lock into what he's doing in this hour. Because God wants to raise up a mighty army. And we have to understand as we stand up and we war and we're in the presence of God we needn't be fearful you know there was there was someone that wrote a, a series of books about how we should be fearful to, to do spiritual warfare because something might come back on us and I'm a firm believer that we should be careful to pray corporately and also we should see who the covering is that is covering us as we pray corporately but I can say in this gathering God has called me as a prophet to the nations so I have the covering to be able to speak over the nations so when you pray corporately on these prayer broadcast we are praying for the nations and you can you can be assured that when we release revelation knowledge and we war that we're getting the job done because that is the anointing i walk in and so that covering is yours concerning uh being careful corporately listen you can walk through your neighborhoods you can pray for the city you live in in twos and threes and and you can still do tremendous damage to the evil one and and we do a lot of um, uh, prayer walking in cities and we we discern what's happening prophetically god has taken us to paris he's taken us to other places where we discern and we spiritually map and we pray down strongholds sometimes no, no more than about eight of us but because we're prophetic and we, we are anointing as such that as intercessors we can make a difference so i don't want you to ever be fearful because the presence of god is around about us and we are in the mountain of zion and he sends angels to push back the enemy he protects us as we speak his sovereign will you just must understand that as you hear you must do and and don't take on more than what you've been assigned and that so that's why you have to understand what he's calling you to do i am called for the nations you may be called to just your city but as you come under this covering you can then pray for nations hallelujah praise be to god we thank you father so I wanted to just speak to you about the governmental authority that we have, and then we're going to pray. 
I want you to be encouraged tonight that you absolutely do have governmental authority as you sit in the uh, and you pray with me in these meetings. And because when the word of the Lord comes out of Zion, because we're, we're, we're in his presence when we're speaking forth by revelation, it is saying that we have governmental place in God to be able to turn the nations to, to a place that their focus is on God rather than sin, rather than distractions. And we are, we are privileged through intimate worship to be able to govern for him. Now, the other part of this word that I wanted to tell you about. Now, again, we're going to read uh, through it one by one and go over it over tonight and tomorrow night as well. Because God did give me 11 mandates uh, of the spirit that need to be happening in this next season. And, and we're going to go over some of them tonight. The first one that he gave me, this is the, the Lord was speaking to me a few nights ago, is that we must enrich the habitation of the Lord's people. So the body of Christ, we have to enrich that. So what does that mean to enrich? That means we have to educate. We have to influence. We have to bring them out of blindness and lukewarmness into a place of being on fire for him. It means we have to uh, proclaim uh, freedom to the captives, those that are in a place where the spirit of God is not moving. We have to break down strongholds. We have to speak words to leadership, you know, so they hear accountability as prophetic people. We have to be all that we can be as spiritual vehicles for the Lord to cause there to be uh, salt and light in the body of Christ. So they're not in disobedience. So they're no longer sleeping. So they wake up to, to the seasons that we're in. Hallelujah. The second thing, the second mandate the Lord gave me in regards to uh, what's going to be happening in the next season is we need to increase the capacity of spiritual hunger for the word of God. And I'm not just talking about the Bible. I'm talking about the spiritual hunger for the prophetic word of God as well. You know, I had someone say to me tonight, well, you know, there's always going to be prophetic camps, but I just want to serve Jesus. And can I just say, it says in the word that Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If you can't hear, which the spirit of prophecy is hearing, you know, you get, get into that intimate place with the Lord and you hear. If you can't hear from the, hear from the Lord, then you can't commune with him. It's no good going in there and, and, you know, and hearing some beautiful music and being touched by it. If God's not speaking to you in this hour, it can just be a few words like, I love you, my child. Or this, it's going to be all right. I'm sending you my peace. Your son is coming into the kingdom. Don't worry. I'm healing you of that illness. It can be simple things at first. And then God will give you more. But we've got to learn how to converse with the Lord and increase communication between him and, and, and ourselves. And, and so we have to increase the spiritual hunger for the word. So that's why we have a mandate as a prophetic hub in Southeast London to bring forth the word of the Lord. And God gives me lots of visions and words, but also many of us within our, our prophetic hub in Southeast London. And I believe there's companies of prophets all over the nations of the earth that are bringing forth the word of the Lord and causing there to be a spiritual hunger for the prophetic. Hallelujah. The third one, and I'm just going to read up to about five tonight and then we'll go over more tomorrow the third mandate of the spirit the lord gave me that needs to be happening in this next season is there has to be a release or a flowing out of the torrential rain of his spirit of the spirit realm so in other words we've got to do all that we can to cause the spirit of god to flow I mean, continually flow. We've got to speak about the presence. We've got to release the presence. We've got to walk in peace and not criticize or do anything to obstruct the flow of his love. Remember what it said there in, in Song of Solomon, that the banner over us is love. 
And so we have to act in love to others. And even, you know, the Lord gave me Romans 12 today about how, you know, even with your enemies, the Lord is saying, uh, he spoke to me uh, through those scriptures. He said, even, tell them that even with your enemies, and this is in, in Romans 12, 19 through 21, that, that we still have to bless them because he will avenge us. We don't have to speak out words back to them of how they don't understand us and they're criticizing us. And, and we've all done it. I mean, and we ask God's forgiveness. We repent and, and we're stronger after we come out of repentance. But we don't have to get our eyes fixed on anyone that doesn't understand about our walk in the spirit. It's set, the Lord says, keep giving them food. Keep giving them drink. Keep blessing them. Keep walking in peace and being focused on me. And I will be your avenger. And then you will change their hearts. That's what he's saying. And that is the best thing that you can do. My mother used to say, it's it's like uh, you, you just kill them with kindness. <laughs> That's all you do. But it, 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 there's something to that. You know, you're releasing the spirit of God to make a difference in their life. life because th whatever they're doing isn't phasing you because you're focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. The fourth one is to, the Lord spoke to me. The fourth mandate by his spirit is we need to ask prophets, particularly this is for the Jeremiah, the Ezekiel prophets, people that understand the deeper realms of the spirit. We need to open up the seals of the forgotten scrolls. And there in Daniel 12, there's there's scrolls that were closed up and sealed for a time. And the, these scrolls, these things that are written, in, especially in the Old Testament prophet books, they, now we are in the time that those things are going to be unfolded and, and that we're going to have new vision and understanding of those scrolls. So we need to, to be unraveling those mysteries as prophets of the Most High God. And the fifth one is we need to launch the next generation so that they understand the responsibility of revival. This was the spiritual mandate the Lord gave me. This is why people of God, the enemy is trying to take out the next generation because their responsibility is that of revival. We are the ones, we're the forerunners. We're positioning people. We're bringing and transitioning people into the Holy of Holies, to the mountain of Zion, so they understand what it means to flow with the Spirit of God. They understand about a closeness and intimacy with the Lord. They understand about letting loose of distractions and how, what it truly means to resist Satan and he has to flee, what it truly means to walk authority but i can tell you the next generation we are meant to teach them that and then they are meant to birth revival i believe uh the generation after us and the next generation shall be right in the midst of a global revival a billion soul harvest and this is why this next generation the enemy is targeting so very hard but i can tell you god will have his way he will have his way. We will keep declaring that they will be set free by the blood of the lamb. We are we are living in a corrupt world where they, you know, we have knife crimes. We have shootings in the schools in America. We have uh, young kids being taken into to all sorts of human trafficking. Uh, we have uh, defilement in schools of unclean teaching and unclean lifestyles. We have so much hitting our children. We have pedophiles on the Internet all of these evils, but I can tell you, God will have his way. He is sovereign. We can declare that. We are moving into a season where the nations are being birthed. Mechizedek nations are being birthed, and these will be nations of righteousness, not darkness. His light is going to shine down in such a way that his, the great release of his spirit will happen, and that anointing will start flowing like a mighty, mighty uh, river. There'll be, a, a, you know, the surging of the rivers of God will not have rest because they will keep flowing and we will have preservation through all of this shaking because God wants us to cooperate so that we then can speak the word of the Lord and, and help this positioning happen and the preparation of this next generation to come about. Hallelujah. We are in a good place, people of God, and we need to be encouraged. I do know that we're looking at uh, the UK. It's looking like. Uh, we're on a downward slope as far as positive cases, uh, but they still are about and we still need to be very careful. I want to really pray tonight 
because we're still seeing people flocking out to, to stores. I read over in Hackney, London, which is East London this morning, I was reading how uh, really on Sunday, which was yesterday, the, it was sunny, it was a sunny, beautiful day. There were just people out at the shops, just crowded in places. They weren't observing social distancing. Uh, they were they were buying things in furniture shops and, and this is still happening. And th this is, uh, you know, a, a very, very dangerous thing to happen because I can tell you, I work for the national health system. I mean, we, we are still wearing uh, face shields, okay, and, and masks. Uh, we are still uh, seeing loads of COVID-19 cases in nursing homes, in hospitals, and the death toll right now in the UK is 28,734, and positive coronavirus cases is 187, 842 cases. So we need to pray that this rebellious attitude, this attitude of, every, you know, that I, I'm going to live forever. And, and nothing will happen to me. Uh, and these are people that generally don't have a reverence for God. They, they have a reverence for self and they have self idolatry going on. And and I'll tell you what, those of us that understand uh, that this is a judgment that God has allowed know the danger of it. And that even though we will be preserved, we must reverence God that he's allowed this to come upon the earth and that people can still get sick from it if you don't respect what is happening in this hour. So we're going to pray for these people because, of course, we don't want that to happen. We want them to understand the dangers and that we're still not, not out of the woods, although things tend to be improving. Praise be to God. In the U.S., sadly, so very sadly, it's a million 167,000 cases, 241. And the death toll is now at a staggering 68,076 cases, which is, again, so very tragic and sad. And we will certainly pray for the U.S. as well. Uh, the, and to be honest, the U.K. has a very, very high uh, death toll across Europe. In fact, the only one that is above us uh, uh, you know, in this part of the world is Italy at 28,884 and then Spain at 25,100 and France at 24,729. So, so certainly there still is a lot happening out there. The African nations, I read those numbers yesterday. I still feel very impressed in my spirit that the African nations are, are under threat. And we need to be praying for them because they don't have, uh, you know, the, the medical facilities or the protection uh, be, because of the lack of resources there. And so uh, we need to absolutely be praying for the African nations as well. But people of God, I want you to be encouraged tonight because once you understand the season that we're in and that we're move, crossing the divide, like I saw in my vision from, from one cliff to another, cross the rope bridge, that, that, you know, and that there actually is a changing of seasons and that we're moving into a more glorious season for God's purpose, then you understand really why this shaking is going on because God has to get people's attention. They have to understand that God is the one in control of, of all things. He's in control of time. He's in control of COVID-19 and he's certainly over the enemy. Greater is he than is in us than he that is in the world. God is sovereign and he is well well able to put a stop to COVID-19, but I believe that he is tearing because there needs to be change. And, and we still will need to war even after COVID-19, but there needs to be a release of changed hearts not only just for salvation and and but also our own hearts so that we have understanding and we can grow and really press in to our destiny so that we can be positioned because God wants everybody to get on board with what he's doing. Hallelujah. In this hour. Praise be to God. Let us pray tonight, you know, and just remember that you are a rose of Sharon. You know, you're in that mountain of Zion and all of these demonic mountains, the word talks about the mountains being melting like wax and being cast into the sea. They're going to go because God is sovereign and he is higher than any of these other demonic strongholds. But remember that we are as the Rose of Sharon, that we are blooming at the top of the mountain as we move into our destinies. And we need to understand that, that God is preparing us as his bride and, and he wants us without spot or wrinkle. And some of those spots or wrinkles is because we're frightened to move on to that next 
uh, you know, bit a bit of our journey because it's, it feels a bit shaky. It feels a bit unsure. But if you remember, if you just remember that God keeps us under the shadow of El Shaddai, that He keeps angelic hosts round about us, that we are we are moving with Him in tandem all of the time. That He is His eye is upon us at all times. Then you will know that you are safeguarded. That the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord, and you'll no longer have fear or uncertainty. Because you'll be able to just flow with the Lord and have greater understanding. As I go out to work, because I, I work for the NHS as a senior manager uh, three and a half days a week. And as I go out, um, I go out in full knowledge that God told me that I'm going to be a very old lady, that I'm going to be an old lady prophet. And, and at, as a result of that, I've got much to do for the kingdom. And so I know that I will live long and declare the word of the Lord. And so I don't go with fear or trust. Trepidation. I go with uh, I go with uh, fear of the Lord and I pray his protection over myself and my household and my children. And I, I stay I, I stay in a place of humility before him. But I hold on to those words of destiny, those prophetic words that he shared with me. And I know that I'm going to move on into this next great season for purpose. And this is what I want you to grab hold of tonight, that there are people here that are listening to this broadcast tonight. And even those that, that are listening to the recorded sessions after tonight, that you need to understand that what it says in Psalm 139, 16 that you have a destiny book that God has declared before you were even created that you have purpose. You have a scroll that is, is opening up and God says, I've always wanted you to do this. I've gifted you to do this. I've gifted you to, to have this uh, blessing in your life, to have this family, to have this business, to have this ministry. And if we know those things and we can walk in surety that we will fulfill them as we stay in a place of faith. Hallelujah. God is good. Let us declare tonight. We're going to make our declarations. Now, remember, when we make declarations according to the word of God, we are using the word of the, of the spirit to basically uh, uh, divide bone from sinew. So we, what we're doing is we're using the word of God to, to be a mighty sword to damage the enemy. And so this is why I love making declarations, because it, it basically smacks the enemy right between his eyes and pushes him back and pulls down strongholds. It's a powerful weapon that we should always use. And I can tell you what, if you have a stronghold or an unsaved loved one in your household, you just put scriptures all over the place. Put scriptures up in your on your refrigerator, put it up in, in, in their in their mirrors, in their bedrooms. If you've got ungodly children, uh, you know, my mother used to even put scripture verses underneath pillowcases when my brothers were being really naughty. And I tell you, both of them got saved. And sometimes when strangers would come and visit, she'd put it under the couch cushions. And I'm telling you, telling you, the word of God is powerful. It's powerful. And we can use that as a sword of the spirit. And she would bless those couch cushions. She would bless those pillows. And she would declare the word of the Lord that anybody that lays their head on those pillows would be set free by the blood of the lamb. And I'm telling you, we would just have supernatural miracles all the time in our house because she was a woman of faith and she knew the power of the word of God. We We've got to have that kind of faith in what we're doing and, and how we're utilizing the word of God. Hallelujah. OK, so let's just pray and declare over the nations as we do every single night. But before we do that, let's name the nations and let's go into the presence of God. So, Father, we thank you tonight that, Lord, that we can declare over the nations of the earth. The Father, you give us the rod of authority, Father God, that we have the power of life and death in our tongues. The Father, we can declare your manifest a glory, Father God. We can de declare your power to cut off the enemy, cut and, and root him out from every uh, principal, every city and every principal place that he dares to stand and raise himself uh, against you, Father God. For we know that no weapon forged against 
us nor you can prosper, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we call out the continent of Africa, Father God, and all the nations therein. And Father, we, we call out the UK, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, the US, Father God, and Spain and Italy, Father God, and France, Father God, and all the nations of the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, uh, enemy, we say uh, threefold uh, collaboration of demonic principality of the dragon, the beast, and the false witness. We say you have no authority over those nations. You shall not any longer reign in such a way that corrupt leaders are in charge and causing evil to be released. That princes sit at gates of cities, demonic princes, where they can release evil and they can release edicts across the citizens and cause darkness and pain and torment. We cut you off right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare, according to the word of God, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3. And we pray for the leaders of the nations of the earth. We pray for President Donald Trump. We pray pray for Boris Johnson. We pray for the, the leaders of the nations of the earth. And we say, uh, Satan, you have no dominion over them. You'll not tempt them into ways of, of the evil one. You, and, and Father God, I ask that you would give them the wisdom of Solomon. The Father God, they will move according to your purpose, Lord, that all a witchcraft attempts to cause them to be tempted or their, their vision to be blocked, that you would cut that asunder in Jesus' name and you'd release them into a place of mighty wisdom and orchestration by your spirit. Give them godly dreams, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. Give them angelic visitations, Father God. Let them understand what it means to be committed to you their whole hearts committed to you father god in jesus name father I ask that you would, we speak over the leaders specifically of Nigeria, Father God, and Ghana, Father God. And Lord, I'm, yes, Lord, I hear you. By, over South Africa, in the name of Jesus, Father God, and over France, Father, these leaders uh, that, that are walking in disobedience before you, Lord. And we ask in Jesus' name that you would cause them to, the enemy to be circumvented, Lord, that he would not in any way torment them or cause them to be deceived in Jesus' name. But Lord, help them to make just decisions for their citizens to protect their citizens lord let them be rendered uh power father god by your spirit in such a way that even if they're cyruses lord even if they're not serving you that father they will still go your way because you will influence them father god and we thank you father we give you praise tonight father we ask that you would let the wicked one be cut down and wither as a green herb father god lord as is mentioned in psalm 37 2 father god we ask the father that our nations lord uh would would be uh it's such a place uh, uh, that they would be pulled into a place of righteousness that we can dwell in father god that they would be released to be mechizedek nations father god Lord, that they would no longer move in a place of darkness, but Lord, they would move into your marvelous light in Jesus' name. Lord, we declare out of Psalm 72 verses 8 and 9, that your dominion, Father God, will be established over the nations of the earth. And Lord, that the enemies will lick the dust of our feet, Father God, in Jesus' name. Let all idolaters across Africa, the UK, Father God, the United States, Lord, let them be confounded and let confusion be released into their camps in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would save these nations by the blood of the Lamb, Father God, according to your word in Psalm 118, verse 25, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we pray that these nations, Father God, will be converted and Lord, that the wealth of the nations will, will be brought into the storehouse, Father God, not for the, a spirit of mammon or greed, but Father God, for the kingdom to be uh, moving forwards, Father, to be advanced, the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Let us have influence and favor. Let the voice of the prophets go forth and make a difference, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us be uh, raised up to have credibility, Father God. Let the people of God rise. Let the people of Zion be on top of the mountain, Lord, in the spirit of God as they move in a place, Lord, that they shall have influence, Father God, in Jesus' name, over every worldly global leader, every wor worldly and global power in the name of Jesus. Lord, that the body of Christ would no longer move in a place of lukewarmness. Lord, that they would not be afraid of controversy, Lord, as we move into the things of the spirit. But Lord, that they would be uh, 
on fire for you, Father God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that they would be so hungry for your word, Father God, that they would move in such a way, Lord, that they would be, they would not be able to even sleep at night because of the hunger, the fire that shut up in their bones, Father God. Let them repent before you, Lord, when they've held back the spirit of God and let them move into a greater place of desiring your spirit, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. Lord, we ask that you would let every covenant of death and hell be broken over the nations. And Lord, we declare that over the hospitals, Father God, Lord, over the nursing homes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, over the nations of Africa, Father God, over London and New York, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, over Edinburgh and Glasgow, Father God, Lord, over uh, Lagos, Father God, in Nigeria, Father God, Lord, oh, uh, Los Angeles, California, and, and Santa Rosa, Lord, in Orange County, Lord, we declare the death and destruction destruction and lord that this is cut off that there is no covenant with death and hell and lord we pray for the people that are still flocking out in london and many places across the uk and going shopping and and having a a very uh lackadaisical attitude about the dangers that are all around and father god we ask that you would wake them up that they would no longer be in spiritual blindness but they would understand the seasons that they're walking in and lord that they would not propagate more illness and death and destruction because of their carelessness father god in the mighty name of jesus wake them up father god speak to them the night hours let them hear news reports lord stir them to understand that lord that we are still in a place of danger father god in the mighty name of jesus father god release your sovereign arm lord release your angelic host father god and pull down every prideful spirit within them in Jesus' name, every rebellious spirit within them, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that they would no longer be motivated by Leviathan or the spirit of mammon and greed. Father God, that they would no longer be deceived by Jezebel and this false witness, this counterfeit, that everything's okay when everything is not, Father God. Let them enter in with softened hearts to you, Father God, that you would rally them and draw them by your spirit into the kingdom of God, Father God, in Jesus' name. Father, we speak Isaiah chapter 65, verse 25, that you would, we declare that you let the enemies of our lands uh, be reconciled reconciled to your purpose, Father God, that you are sovereign, Father God, that you are the almighty, that you are in charge of time, that you are the one that is over COVID-19, that, Father God, that you are the one that is sovereign and have all authority over the nations, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would let the nation of the UK be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. And that is Isaiah 45, verse 22, Father God. Lord, we ask that you would allow the nations of the earth to be in, in a place of governance by the Christians, by those that are sold out for you, your sons and daughters. Let us rise up to our place of governance of the nations of the earth as we intercede and pray. Lord, we bind all spirits of fear that are upon us at this hour, Father God, at this appointed time. And Lord, I rebuke the devourer, this, this enemy that would come in and try to cause, steal our finances and try to plant fear upon us and steal our confidence and would try to sift us like wheat and I say cease and desist maneuvers against the men and women of God within the body of Christ upon the nations of the earth for you have no authority over them they are sons and daughters of the most high God and Lord Lord I ask that you would safeguard their bank accounts the Lord you would safeguard their jobs in the mighty name of Jesus that you would safeguard their emotions that they would no longer walk in fear Father God and Lord that you would plant within them a new courage in Jesus name Lord I release that courage I impart that courage upon them right now in the name of Jesus, that they would rise by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit and they would understand how they can walk in the governance of your spirit, the authority of your spirit as we move in the spirit realm as your sons and daughters. Let them hear from you, Lord. Let them have prophetic dreams, Father God. Let them have the interpretation of the dreams and understand that they are mighty in your sight because you make them mighty. Lord, help us to be holy and righteous before you, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
We thank you, Father. We give you praise tonight. We give you praise tonight. Father, we declare that your justice and judgment will increase across the nations of the earth. Well, I'm going to declare that again. Please declare with me, people of God. I'm declaring that the Lord's justice and judgment will be increased upon the nations of the earth, that his righteous judgments will go forth for a changing and a transformation of mankind, that, Lord, that they would never be the same, that they would never be the same, that they would no longer lock into unclean lifestyles, that, Father, they would no longer be politically correct and allow a tolerance of evil, but, Father, Father, that they would no longer be in false humility and be fearful, Father God, but, Lord, that they would rise up as a mighty people, Lord, as mighty men and women of war, Father God, that they would release a mighty shout as the roar of the Lion of Judah, and they would move according to your purpose, Father God, that they would understand their authority in you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, propagate the prophetic, release and increase the prophetic tonight, Father God, that we would understand what you are saying in this hour, and we would release the word of the Lord, Father God, across the nations of the earth. Lord, that your loving kindness would be known, Father God, because just as Jesus sat at the well, Father God, and spoke into the life of the woman who had so many husbands and was so unclean, and, and then she knew that that of god's love father god we we know that this kind of loving kindness released from the prophetic can change the very hearts of men and father i ask in jesus name that you would help us to have that sensitivity as we release your comfort and your peace father god as the banner of love is over our our heads father god as we are the, the very personification of jesus christ as we release these words oh father god Thank you, Lord. We give you praise tonight. We give you praise. Let your wonders go forth, Father God. Let your wonders go forth, Father God. This is, Lord, as it's, as it's written in Psalm 96, verse 20, let your glory be declared among the people of the nations of the earth, Father God, and that your wonders would be amongst the nations, Father God. Your sign and wonders would be amongst the nations. Lord, we pray for all of the families of the people listening tonight, Father God, and all of the people of the nations of the earth, and especially those in the body of Christ, Lord. Let them not have unsaved family members, but Lord, break the yoke of the enemy. Lord, let there not any longer be darkness in the families of the beloved, Father God, but all of them would have light shining into their children and their loved ones, Lord, that by a, your sovereign move of your hand, Father God, that you will rip the veil off their eyes and they would see you for who you truly are a sovereign and merciful and loving god and we thank you father we give you praise tonight you are worthy you are worthy we thank you father lord we pray for the for the those that are in the front lines father god Oh, Father God, I work with doctors. Lord, I know of their commitment, Lord. I know of their courage, Father God. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you would safeguard them tonight, Father God. I know I worked as a nurse myself over an A&E department for more than 20 years, Father God. And I know of the commitment it takes to work in that environment, Lord. I've worked up in intensive care. I know of the commitment it takes, Father God. And Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask that you would safeguard these people that are in these places, Father God, that they would no longer be fearful. But Lord, that your sovereign hand would sweep over them, Father God, and your glory would shine down, that their hearts would be encouraged, Father God, and they would seek you, Father God, that their eyes would be fixed upon you. That Lord, that you would sweep over these hospitals, Father. You would sweep over these nursing homes, Father, these doctor's offices, any place that they are, and Father, that you would encourage their hearts. You would safeguard them, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I also ask that, Lord, that you bless ambulance drivers, Father God, the nurses aides, the nursing assistants, Father God, that you would bless those that are receptionists, and Father, those that are in the front lines, the ambulance, those that are the soldiers, the police, the train drivers, Lord, all those that are in the front lines, Father God, that you would also safeguard them and help them to cry out to you in this hour, Father God, in Jesus' name, that truly, the Father God, you will cause a sweeping of your sovereign hand as they are changed and they are protected in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you are doing a sovereign thing in the midst of us. Lord, not that we've seen in this generation or many generations before us, that Lord, but this is war. Father, we're, we're pressing the spiritual reset 
button, Father God. And we are seeing a change like we've never known, Father God, by your spirit. Let it come to pass according to your purpose, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. We give you praise tonight. We give you praise. Hashibala Gandiba. We thank you, Father. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. And I hear the Lord say, my people, do you smell the fragrance of rain? The Lord is saying again, my people, do you smell the fragrance of rain? For yea, it is nigh upon you, says the Lord. And yea, the sprinkling of my water is coming down, says the Lord. And yea, it shall start in small pools and puddles across the ground and even the desolate grounds upon the earth. But the Lord says, know that the torrents of my spirit are coming. Yea, a downfall of rain is coming more mighty than you've ever seen in your entire life, says God. And and yea, it's time to start learning how to swim by the Spirit, how to usher in those things that I've called and proclaimed are meant to happen across the nations of the earth. The Lord says, as you love your enemies, so I shall cause there to be a release, says God. The Lord says, as you learn to war by my Spirit, so I shall cause there to be a release, says God. The Lord says, learn to cooperate with, with me, my children, and I shall cause the weather to change, says God. No longer will there be the dry and barren deserts where you are but a marginalized and and it's put in a place of disrepute disrepute says god but the lord says i'm moving you now from desperate places yea to places of fulfillment says the lord it's time to usher in and smell the fragrance of rain says god surely listen close and hear the changing of the tides hear the changing of the seasons and, and the lord says know that i am with you in this present hour says god yea the pendulums of time are are swinging back and forth says god and i'm raining for such a time of this uh, and, and raining my water down on those that are in those dry places but know this says the lord a refreshing is coming a refreshing is coming a refreshing is coming says the lord it's time to get out the cups and the glasses and fill up uh, those things that need filling up and then pour them out on the heads of others through your prayer, says the Lord. The Lord says, as you intercede with authority, so you shall see results even in your own household, says the Lord, even in your own city, says the Lord even in the nations that you have such a heart for. For the Lord says, know this, that I will even cause those that are in prominent places to be pulled down into a place of humility as you as you move according to my spirit. The Lord says, you shall speak what is not, and yea, it shall appear. For my authority shall bring forth the rain, says the Lord, shall bring forth the rain. This is the time and the season for that release, says the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those that are victimized with COVID-19, Lord. We thank you that you're bringing your healing touch to them tonight. The Lord, that those that have death and destruction uh, that, that's at their doorstep and those that have lost loved ones, Father God, that they shall be moving into a place of comfort, Father God. And we speak life where there has been death. We speak life where there has been death. And we say, Satan, you have no dominion over those hospital corridors. You have no dominion over those nursing homes in the mighty name of Jesus. And we cut off every assignment that wants to cause more death and destruction in Jesus' name. We speak, We cut off every assignment that wants to cause there to be a perpetuation of this virus where it goes into a superbug. We cut off that assignment in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we, we know that you are bringing forth a vaccine in your appointed time and hour. Lord, we ask that you would cause that to, to happen according to your timing. But Lord, that there would be no obstacles of finance, that there would be no obstructions for this not to happen. But Lord, in your due timing, Lord, that this thing will be created according to your purpose, Lord. And Lord, that this COVID-19 will be cut off and stopped in Jesus' name so that we may move on to the, the times and the purposes that you have declared for us in this hour in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. Oh, we give you praise tonight, Lord. We give you praise tonight, Father. You are so worthy, Father God. You are so worthy. You are so worthy.
We thank you, Father. We give you praise tonight. Let's just sing amazing grace, people of God. I believe that there is such an amazing grace that's being released upon the nations of the earth. This grace that's coming down, these torrents of rain, this, this fragrance of rain that the Lord was just speaking about that we need to be smelling. That's his grace. That's his glory that's coming down. And God is causing there to be a mighty filling up of hearts so that we can carry his love out to the masses and position the next generation for revival. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that had saved a wretch like me. How he was, was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Oh, let's sing it again. How amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. How he once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, 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 praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's releasing his power, his glory, his grace. We can have full confidence that he is moving in our behalf in this hour. I want to encourage you tonight that God goes before us and makes a way. And as I said before, people of God, if you just click that share button and release the anointing of this these wonderful broadcasts, I know that God is going to break the yokes up off of your family members, your friends. And I believe that there's going to be a perpetual situation of his spirit as you do that thank you for being faithful to help us in that regard and also please do send us your revelations that you have via tl prophetic mystery at outlook.com via email or you can facebook messages uh, messenger us to over our facebook page which is torchlighters international ministry or uh, by all means come on to our website at uh, torchlighters international ministry www.com we are happy for you to have a look there and see the revelations that we've had these last 47 days because we want you to pray in your private time and stand with us during these corporate times that we are uh, hourly warring by the spirit of God. Remember, God is with us and he is positioning us for this next great season of change and transformation because he is birthing Mekhizedek nations. And this is the hour for change, but also an hour for God's great glory to come down. And we praise him for that. We praise him that we can live in such an exciting time and take part as he entrusts us with these uh, responsibilities and this great glorious uh, purpose that he set before us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. I love you so much. We love you as a ministry and God loves you too. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. This is Lisa Aberry again at Torchlighters International Ministry. Have a great night and we will see you tomorrow. Bless you. Bye-bye.